What is up guys? Welcome back for week 8 of the GPC. This week we are taking on Melantosh or Melantoshington and the Exeter Chief Electivires. Now, uh, Melon is a person that I have been wanting to play for a very long time ever since meeting him in the GOT. He was also in the GPC last season, but we didn't get to cross paths either because he was in the opposite division, the one with Merc and Shoddy. But uh, this season he is in our division and I've been waiting for this game for a while just as I was for the last game uh, against Dom. They were my two most um, wanted games. Uh, I guess Ethan would be up there as well. So those were my top three that I wanted to play this season. Uh, Zazo I wasn't really looking forward to, but I did want to play him as well. But uh, this week, as you can see, I'm going to put his team on the right side. I've been getting a little bit lazy with the actual uh, teams themselves. I'm tired of making images and putting them on the right, so I'm just going to list them out to you, and you're going to see a list of the actual team on the right side. So his team is made up of Clefable, Mega Scizor, Salamence, Slowbro, Z Heatran, Superior, Skuntank, Rhydon, Manectric, and Ambipom. Now, uh, there were a few things that I thought would come for me, uh, specifically... Uh, Salamence actually destroys my team, so I was, uh, I wasn't looking forward to playing against that thing. Uh, Mega Scizor was definitely coming against me, there's, there's no reason for him not to bring it. Alola Whack is the only thing that really checks it and it gets knockoff, so, uh, that's, uh, that's that. Uh, Slowbro, I was 100% sure would come, <clears throat> because if you look at his team, realistically, he doesn't have very good Zygarde and Megalopony checks. You could count Clefable, but Clefable is a lot more frail on the physical side than Slowbro is. Uh, Clefable is never frail, but it can take hits from, uh, especially this Zygarde set that you guys see in front of you, uh, and uh, Megalopony as well as Slowbro can. So Slowbro was a guaranteed bring for me in my head. Uh, Heatran was also very likely because of the Jirachi. Uh, and then the rest were kind of a toss-up. I kind of figured that Skuntank would come and possibly Rhydon to shut down my Thunderous. Uh, as you guys are going to see, I can deal with Rhydon. Manectric was also a potential bring in a mock battle that I had. Uh, somebody brought, uh, Zappy actually from the uh, Petit Conference, brought Crunch uh, Manectric against me so that he could at least dent the Marowak. Uh, but that didn't end up working out too well for him. So uh, anyway, you guys are going to see how this goes down. Uh, Zygarde, as you can see, Drizzy. Uh, by the way, I will leave a timestamp, as always, to the actual battle in the description down below, so make sure if you don't want to check out this team builder, go right ahead, skip uh, skip ahead, or you can just check out the sets one by one, see what we're bringing. But, Zygarde, this week I'm bringing Choice Bandit, because other than Slowbro, my opponent has no switch-ins to a Bandit Zygarde's Thousand Arrows, or even Earthquake for that matter. Uh, Outrage is there so that I can, uh, I can just spam the most powerful attack I have on his team once his Clefable is gone. Um, and E-Speed is there so that I can pick up uh, knockouts in the endgame. I, I can set myself up for knockouts, so that's Zygarde. It's pretty straightforward. The speed on here is to outspeed Max Speed Heatran, which I'm pretty convinced he will bring against me, because uh, it does do pretty well against me, so there we go. Uh, moving on to Luna, Megalopony. Now, this set is uh, something that I've brought before in the past, I believe. It's max attack, adamant, so that, uh, that Clefable can't switch into me too well if it wants to run any special defense whatsoever. Um, 48 HP, that's just so that my speed hits 358. That is faster than his superior at max speed, so as long as I weaken that thing, I can knock it out with a return. It's all good. Uh, Toxic is here specifically for the slow bro, because if I get a Toxic off on it as he switches into it, uh, I'm going to wear it down super fast, and he's not going to be able to have it as a check for my Zygarde or for my Megalopony anymore. So that's the idea behind that. Um, power Up Punch is there just so that I can make sure that I 2-hit uh, KO Clefable on the Switch if he is a max defense variant. And Moonblast won't knock me out because of my slight HP investment, so... Unless he's a Life Orb set, in which case that would be scary, but yeah. Uh, moving on, we have Jake Kareem's 14, the Blastoise, the new addition to our team that did come last week and snag two kills. This week I'm bringing Scald, Ice Beam, Protect, and Rapid Spin. Now, right before the game, I switched out Toxic for Protect because I'm an idiot. And I, for some reason, thought that his Salamence was his Zemon and not his Heat Ran. So, ultimately, it ends up working against both because Heat Ran can only uh, go for Bloom Doom once, and then the Grass type move that it has takes two turns to charge up, and I have good switch ins to it. Uh, and Sky Strike, Sky Strike knocks me out from full, but if I protect, his following fly will not knock me out. And I can Ice Beam him afterwards and just destroy him. So that's the idea there. Put him in range of E-Speed from Zygarde is what I'm going with. Uh, Rapid Spin is there to make sure that Hazards do not get up on my side. I need to make sure my Thunderous is as healthy as possible this game. Because, <coughs> excuse me, it is my main sweeper. Uh, you guys are going to see here, Thunder T with Agility, Thunderbolt. Uh, Sludge Wave, Grass Knot, and Poisonium Z. So Grass Knot is there just to make sure that I can knock out the Rhydon if it comes. Alternatively, I could have gone with HP Ice. 
but uh, Thunderbolt hits Salamence already hard enough to put it in range of E speed from my Zygarde, so it's not an issue. Uh, Thunderbolt does a lot to uh, obviously Slowbro, it destroys it. Uh, Sludge Wave is there for the Clefable and for the Superior so that I can hit them for super effective damage. As well, it's my strongest move to hit the Manectric with, and uh, Thunderbolt just wails on everything else. Like Mega Sizz doesn't want to take it, Heatran doesn't want to take it. Um, nor does his Salamence, we already covered that, uh, nor does his Ambipom. As soon as I get up in Agility, I'm faster than Scarf Mence with this speed. Now, in retrospect, I probably should have ran uh, max speed to outspeed Salamence at neutral, so that I could make sure that I would, if it comes in on me, it doesn't just immediately knock me out if I don't have an Agility. But uh, I thought that this set was a little bit better because it allowed me to take Moonblast and Ice Beams from Clefable which is kind of my main setup target. Get up on Agility on that while everything is weakened. Z Sludge Wave, knock it out if it's not um, Kebia Berry. And then uh, Thunderous just goes to work on the rest of his team. So uh, that was the idea behind this set. Also, I had one more Z move that I had to run. So I decided Poisonium Z was probably the best way to go just to make sure that I can knock out the Clefable because if it does come as, as a specially defensive unaware set, I can still deal a heavy amount of damage to it uh, because it could come with that set specifically for... Uh, nasty plot thunderous so that was in the back of my mind moving on we have hashtag twitter bio the alolan marowak with a cobra berry lightning rod fire punch uh earthquake shadow bone and stealth rocks my main stealth rock setter of course uh, I want to make sure to get up rocks against this team because Salamence is an issue I need to chip away at the scissor if I want to be able to knock it out with uh, repeated thunderbolts from uh from thunderous I also need to uh do some damage to Heatran, I would like to do some damage to Superior, chip away at the Skun Tank, pretty much everything except for Clefable uh, would be really nice. Fire Punch is there, of course, for the Mega Scizor. Cobra Berry is here specifically for the Scizor as well, and also for his Skun Tank, so that I can switch out on it if it comes in, or I can take its Crunch and Earthquake it. I'm not Thick Club, so I don't have that much attack, but it's still going to do a lot of damage and put him in range of anything else on my team, essentially. So that's what I'm going for with that. Shadow Bone just hits neutrally across this team, except for Skun Tank. Uh, and then uh, Stealth Rocks, I already explained, so that's pretty much straightforward. Uh, Cobra Berry also allows me to take other dark moves on his team. He has a lot of dark moves, uh, like I mentioned earlier, Crunch on Mega Manectric. Uh, Amb Ambipom gets Knock Off. Skun Tank is a, dark, uh, is a dark type and has a ton of dark type stab. Heat Ran gets Dark Pulse. Um, Slowbro gets Shadow Ball. I don't think it gets Dark Pulse, but anyway. Salamence gets Crunch. Scizor, Mega Scizor gets Knock Off. So I wanted to be able to make sure that I covered that typing specifically and that I was able to deal some damage to whatever I was in against. And then finally, Lucky and Bad the Jirachi. This week, uh, I'm going with a Calm Mind set with max special defense. Now, the idea behind this set is that his only wall to my physical attackers that's reliable enough to switch in repeatedly is going to be Slowbro. So, if I have something to take advantage of Slowbro, that's ideal for me. So, I'm bringing this Jirachi. I can switch in on Slowbro Scalds. I don't care if it burns me. I just go for Calm Mind. And then I'm immediately threatening all of his team because, guys, at plus two... And I should be faster than Heatran. At plus two, Heatran's Fire Blast does a max of 37% to me. 37! And I have HP Ground, which guaranteed Oko's it at plus two if it doesn't have any HP investment and it doesn't have a Sugar Berry. So, that's the idea. Flash Cannon, of course, is able to hit the Clefable, is able to hit the Skun Tank pretty hard, the Rhydon, the Ambipom, it's my main stab. And then Thunderbolt is there to uh, weaken his Mega Scizor because I do want to put it in range of High Jump Kick from Lopini. I didn't mention I do have High Jump Kick on this set, a uh, Return and Power Punch. Uh, but Thunderbolt is also there for the Slowbro since it's my setup target. I want to be able to hit it. Uh, and then, of course, HP Ground is really only there for Heat Ran. Now, in retrospect, instead of HP Ground, I could have run Wish because my setup targets don't really want to switch out on me. They just want to weaken me as much as possible and put me in range of something else. So if I'm able to Wish up as I get up my Calm Mines and then go back up to full, then his immediate response to revenge me is no longer able to revenge me, if you guys catch my drift. So that was the idea, but I did still want a reliable way to hit Heat Ran, so there we go. Uh, that's the team, pretty much, guys. Uh, we're going to jump right into the battle. You're going to see how it played out. Here we go. All right, guys, here we are. This is the battle. We are up against Melantosh and his Exeter Chief Electivirus. As you can see, he brought the Mega Scizor, the Salamence, the Superior, which I was kind of surprised about, the uh, Slowbro, the Heat Ran, and the uh, Clefable. So pretty much everything I expected except for the Serp. I was actually kind of expecting either Ambipom in its place or 
uh, specifically Skun Tank to trap my Gorgeist, my Alolan Marowak, uh, my Jirachi, all of those things. So it was kind of weird to see the Serp there, but I knew that that gave me an extra setup target for Jirachi. So I wasn't upset about that. Essentially, he has four special attackers and only two Fizz attackers. So that's looking good for, uh, for Lucky and Bad over here down in the bottom right corner. So looking at his team, I feel like my best lead matchup is going to be uh, my Alolan Marowak, because the only thing that leads off well against it uh, is going to be, and completely prevents me from getting up rocks, is going to be his Slowbro. Uh, while Slowbro, uh, Slowbro doesn't immediately knock me out, and I am faster than Slowbro, it immediately pressures me. But, like I mentioned in the team builder, if you guys didn't catch that, uh, Jirachi can completely set up on his Slowbro, and his only immediate switch that he should feel comfortable going into should be his Heat Ren, unless his Clefable is unaware, in which case it still takes like 47% from a Flash Cannon. So, uh, I was okay with that. <clears throat> now, um, let's lead off here. I lead off with my Marowak. He leads off with his Heat Ren. So I'm thinking, okay, Earth Power can't knock me out unless he specs. So I should be good to take any attack. But his Heat Ran actually reveals the Dark Pulse. I eat up my Cold Barbarian. And I'm like, okay, this is fine. That didn't do too much. And I get flinched. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to have to stay in here and go for rocks again. Uh, I'm going to lose my Alolan Marowak as a result, unfortunately. But, you know, it's that's the game we play. That flinches do have a chance of happening. But twice in a row is a little less likely, as you can see. So I'm not going to be able to get up my rocks this game unless I get them up on slow, bro. But the problem is, his Heat Ran's going for Dark Pulse. While my Blastoise can take that, and I have Protect, I really don't want to take a Bloom Doom right now because I still need this thing healthy enough for Salamence or else that thing is going to run through my team. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to scout for the Bloom Doom and I'm going to switch back into my Marowak as he goes for another Dark Pulse. He apologized for flinching me twice in a row, but it's not Melon's fault. It's things that happen. Now I'm going to go out into Zygarde. And I think Melon overpredicted here a little bit, but I needed to get rid of this Heat Ram. I couldn't even think about it. I just wait, went straight in for an Earthquake. I think he had HP Ice probably on this Heat Ram. I didn't actually check the Heat Ram set specifically. He did send me all his sets. But now he goes into Slowbro, and I am immediately threatened, of course. But this is my setup target, so I'm going to go out into Jirachi. And had I brought HP Fire or Wish, I would have been fine here. But... Now I'm going to go for a Calm Mind on his Superior. He goes for a Light Screen, so I'm like, okay, this is going to be a little bit tougher to wear down uh, because of the Light Screen. But what I want to do is essentially put his Superior into a position where it dies as the Light Screen goes down, so I don't need to deal with the Light Screen anymore. So he's going to go for a Leaf Storm. That is going to do pitiful damage. 8%. I'm going to be back up to 98 after the, this Calm Mind. And he is going to continue to um, Leaf Storm me. This entire time I was kind of scared of Glare, but the fact that I saw Light Screen kind of confirmed that he might not have Glare. So I just keep going for Calm Mind. I know he has a hidden power to hit me somewhere. He wouldn't be staying in if he doesn't. He misses this Leaf Storm, unfortunately. It kind of makes up for the double flinches. I'm going to go for another Calm Mind. And now his Leaf Storms are still doing nothing to me. They're still doing only like 8%. Uh, this one does 13, actually. He goes up to uh, plus 6. And now I'm going to go for a Calm Mind. And I'm thinking here, if he crits me... I could actually be in a lot of trouble right now, but as long as I get off a little bit of damage on this thing, uh, my Lopany can come back, it can come in and just kill it with a return. So now I'm going to start firing off some flash cannons because I noticed that there are three turns left of light screen, and I know that I cannot uh, two hit KO him under any circumstance. So he reveals the HP dark, actually. Hits my Jirachi for quite a bit of damage, but I am going to uh, three hit KO this superior, and the light screen is going to go uh, down the turn after. So my Jirachi is still pretty healthy. Uh, and I just knocked out his superior. Two of his uh, his attackers are gone. Great, we are up five to four. Now he brings in Salamence, and I'm immediately scared of the Earthquake. So I'm just going to switch out into my Blastoise. He's going to go for the Earthquake. Uh, that is fine with me. I only take 25%. Now here, again, I'm being an idiot because I completely neglected the fact that his Heat Ren was his Zemon and not his Salamence. So I'm going to go for a Protect here as he actually switches out into Clefable, which can take my hits well anyway. So it doesn't really matter that I didn't go for an Ice Beam there. But it, but you're going to see here, I go for a Scald and he goes for his Stealth Rocks, I believe. So he gets up his Rocks. I wasn't able to this game, unfortunately. Uh, luckily for me, though, I, am go I do have Rapid Spin on this thing and I am going to spin away these Rocks as he's going to uh, knock off my Leftovers, which is a actually a pretty big deal. He gets a crit right there. That doesn't really matter, uh, except that I'm at 52%. But this entire time, I'm thinking he's Sky Strike. So I'm just like freaking out now. I'm like, oh, great. Now I lost my Leftovers on my Blastoise. But now I'm going to switch out into Jirachi as he gets back up Stealth Rocks. Uh, and I'm just going to go for a Calm Mind right here, I believe. 
as he goes for a knockoff. No, I go for a flash cannon, excuse me. And this damage right here shows me that he has quite a bit of spadef. So, um, the skull did as well, but this kind of confirms it. As now he's actually going to switch out into a scissor as I decide to call mine up in case he wants the soft boiled. And uh, I think I'm just going to go for a thunderbolt right here and get off some damage on the scissor, which is actually going to be pretty crucial later on, as you guys are going to see. That did 35%. And this damage also confirms to me that his scissor has zero spadef investment. It's probably a little bit of HP, around 120 to 180. So I'm like, okay. Uh, I can definitely deal with this thing with Thunderous later on, uh, but right now I'm just going to go back into Blastoise. He's not going to risk a burn on his Scizor, and I'm just going to go for a Rapid Spin right here as he brings in his Clefable. Now, I, I don't know if it's this turn right here, but I'm going to go for Scald first, uh, as I believe he goes for a for Stealth Rocks again. Uh, I'm not going to get the burn, not that that matters, because he is uh, unaware. Uh, he is Magic Guard, as we've already confirmed. Uh, and now I'm going to Rapid Spin, get rid of his rocks. He's going to go for a Moonblast. Uh, he's going to drop me down to 14%. He gets a special attack drop. Again, it doesn't really matter because I'm faster than this Clefable, and it will never get up rocks on me. But right here, guys, <laughs> I was mid-calcing, and when I came back to the battle, I misclicked, and I clicked Thunderous really fast, and I was like, oh, no, which... Oh, God, I just... I, lo I lost this game. It's over. Uh, I click Thunderous, but he goes for Moonlight, and I was pretty sure that this thing was Magic Guard already, and I don't know how I confirmed that exactly, I can't remember what I did to confirm that, but uh, he goes for Moonlight, which pretty much tells me that he is unaware, uh, but that doesn't matter because the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to Thunderbolt this Clefable, and he's going to go for a Moonblast, and luckily right here, he does not get a special attack drop. Now, uh, I don't think Melon is expecting me to be Poisonium Z. And Sludge Wave actually does not kill from this range uh, most of the time. The max roll, I believe, is 68%. So I think he thinks that he can take it and he can scout for it. But I am actually going to finally, this season, get off a Z-move and go for the Acid Downpour and knock out this Clefable, which has been a huge pain the whole game. Now we're up 4-3 to three and things are looking a little bit better, all because of a little misclick and me actually switching into Thundee on that turn. I just wanted my Blastoise to go down to be real with you guys, uh, but I actually capitalized on him going for Moonlight. Now he's going to bring in Scizor. The problem with him bringing in Scizor, guys, is that I calced it up again with the damage that I did with Jirachi, and it's at this point that I realized that he did have some HP investment, and my Thunderbolt does a max of 63% uh, uh, to him with what I think he has in HP investment. So, uh, I am going to go for the Thunderbolt, and as you guys are going to see, that actually does uh, quite a bit, does 66. Now he's going to go for a Swords Dance. I do not want my Thunderous taking a Bullet Punch right here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sack off my uh, Blastoise as he goes for a Bullet Punch, and now what I can do is bring in my Zygarde and E-Speed. But the problem is, his Slowbro is still right there, I no longer have my Jirachi to set up on it, and... Uh, I'm, I'm not looking too great right now. Now, I don't want to switch in my Thunderous on a potential Ice Beam, which I know he's probably carrying specifically for Zygarde, so that he can break my subs if I did decide to bring that variant. Uh, but Melon actually made a little bit of a, a technical error right here. He didn't calc this E-Speed damage, and had he calced it, he would have gotten a lot of information about my Zygarde and known that I was Choice Banded. But right here, I'm going to switch out into my Megalopony. It's actually not Megad yet, and that's quite important. He's going to go for a Calm Mind, and what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to stay in regular, and I'm going to Toxic him. And the reason that I'm doing this is that Thunderous still destroys him after a couple of Toxic rounds and a return, and if I stay in regular, I'm not weak to his Psychic. And funny enough, Lopany actually, uh, its, it's Special Defense doesn't change as it Mega Evolves, it still has the same 96 Spad F and uh, the same base HP of 65. So I can take a plus one Psychic from here if I stay on Mega Evolved. So I'm going to go for a Toxic right here as he actually goes for another Calm Mind. I can still take a Psychic if I stay on Mega Evolved. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to stay in regular and I'm going to go for the return. Now, in retrospect, I probably should have uh, realized that his Slowbro would probably not be carrying Psychic because I have a Jirachi uh, and it would probably be Scald and Ice Beam, which it is. But I just wanted to make sure that I got off enough damage on this thing to put it in range of something. So he's going to go for a Scald. He's not going to get a burn on this turn, which is awesome for me. 
as I am now finally going to be able to Mega Evolve and go for a return. And I'm going to do quite a bit of damage to this thing, actually. I'm going to do 35%, which means he can't just sit here and slack off because he is toxic. His Scissor's at 3%. It's not going to take a return. His Salamence doesn't want to take a return. And my Thunderous is still alive. So there's no play he can go for here other than Scalding. And with the Racked Up Toxic damage, Lopany coming through, this Slowbro is going to be at 8%. Now, here's my, here's my play, guys. <clears throat> his Salamence is still sitting right there. But Zygarde is really bulky. So I calc this, and with my HP investment, the only thing that can knock me out is Outrage. Not even Adamant Dragon Claw from Salamence can knock out my Zygarde from here. All I have to do in this moment is click a move that hits all three of his Pokemon. That's, that's it. That's all I need to do is just hit a move that hits all three of his Pokemon. And the only move that does that is Thousand Arrows. So... Uh, I'm banking on the fact that he will not have uh, Outrage on his Salamence, rather he will have Dragon Claw, because specifically I have a Jirachi and an Aromatisse. Aromatisse was less likely to come against him because he has two Steel types uh, that are re like really hard check and wall Aromatisse completely, uh, and set up fodder for his Scizor, so that was less likely, but I really thought that he wouldn't want to lock himself into Outrage against my Jirachi. I could come in, Ice Punch him, and destroy him, so that was my thought process there. Uh, I go into Zygarde thinking that I can take any hit from Salamence, and I go for Thousand Arrows. Now, here's where Melon's uh, little miscalculation or misinterpretation of my set earlier uh, really comes into play. He goes into Salamence thinking that he can take a Thousand Arrows into um, into E Speed, and he's actually Haban Berry, so he would be able to take an Outrage from here, even from Banded Zygarde. He would be able to eat it up because of his Haban Berry. Uh, and then he would be able to outspeed me on the following turn. But the problem is, I'm locked into Thousand Arrows. So right here, he actually makes a misplay and goes for Dragon Dance. And I'm going to go for Thousand Arrows. And while this might look bad, keep in mind, his Scizor's at 3% and his Salamence just fell to 17. I'm pretty convinced. I've already seen Dragon Dance and Earthquake. He has to have a Dragon move. I'm almost 100% sure that he does not have Roost on this set. So I'm going to switch out into my Thunderous at this point, let it die to whatever attack he goes for. I know he's a Moxie variant because I haven't seen Intimidate earlier in the game when he came in on Jirachi. Uh, he goes up to plus two, and now my Zygarde comes back in, clicks E-Speed, gets its third kill of the game, and then Scizor comes back in, and we are going to click E-Speed. And ladies and gentlemen, we are going to clinch playoffs for the second season in a row in the GPC with this win over Melantasha. Very close 1-0. I want to give huge props to Melon. Uh, for an amazing game. Thank you so much, dude. Guys, go check out his channel in the in the description. He is a great content creator. Uh, he uploads consistently with uh, with his uh, league battles, so make sure to go check him out. Check out his side. But this does mean that we clinch playoffs because we are now sitting with a 6-2 and two record, and the only way... Uh, actually, no matter what happens in the rest of the league in the final week, in week 9, I will always be either 2nd or 3rd seed which means I will always play the same person, and that person is going to be Ethan. Our match does not rely on what happens in the rest of the league or within our own matches either. We will always face each other, no matter what happens. So in the last week, I can do really whatever I want. I don't need to go super serious. I can t lay back a little bit, but uh, here's, here's a little uh, hint for you, Gareth, if you are watching. Um, my Zygarde is currently sitting at 20 kills. It is the kill leader for the league right now with 20 kills. The closest behind it is Zazo's Lando T. It has 15 kills. The only way that his Lando would be able to surpass my Zygarde based on purely on differential because my Zygarde has only died three times and his Lando has died four. The only way would be for his Lando to 6-0 his opponent which means that my Zygarde still has to come in and get a kill. No matter what, it has to come and it has to get a kill for me to maintain kill leader status. Excuse me, with Zygarde. So there's one Mon that you know is coming week nine. No matter what, I am bringing Zygarde week nine of the GPC. There you have it. Uh, I need to maintain that kill leader status. I want it to stay at 20 kills. And this is the second season in a row that we do have a kill leader. We have Mega. We had Mega Gardevoir last season, and I noticed Zygarde just sitting there at 14 points. The point system that we created, we still didn't know too much about 7th Gen at, at the time. 
Uh, but I knew that Zygarde was an absolute monster. That's why I picked it up. And Drizzy has done so much work for me this season. Uh, essentially just got me uh, two sweeps. And has also given me... Um, well, it's, it's technically, technically gotten like three or four sweeps, actually. Uh, and it's gotten me the, uh, the clinched playoff spot. So... Thank you, Zygarde, for being an amazing dragon. Uh, you are definitely top three dragons in draft league format right now. And uh, I'm, I'm curious to see how you're going to perform in playoffs, but that will uh, be that will remain to be seen. Uh, I am not looking forward to playoffs, guys. I'm going to tell you right now, I have to play Ethan, and then I have to either play Paul or uh, Zazo again. Paul I only beat because I, free, fro uh, I froze his Metagross, and Ethan and Zazo I lost to. So I'm really not looking forward to this, but uh, I think that I can come with more solid prep than I did last time, uh, definitely against his team, so against all their teams. So I'm going to uh, really put in the work. Uh, I can finally take a break. Week 9, we can just relax and just bring whatever we want. We're still going to try to win. I'm, I'm still going to try to win the game. I don't like losing, but... Uh, I am going to uh, take it easy on week 9. So that's going to be it, guys. Uh, again, make sure to go check out Melon in the description, as well as the GPC uh, channel, the GPC Twitter, and all the other coaches in the GPC if you want to keep up with all the action. And uh, that's going to be it for me. Keep cheering on your Montreal Habsols. We are going into playoffs, second season in a row, and I will catch you guys next time. Ciao.